Yeah. Yeah. Or like, we're going to bleed you to death, but we're healing you. And he was like, "Mm, that doesn't seem right. Right. (laughs) We're not doctors. Yeah, we're not. We just talk about it. The watered down version of this. That's what I mean. Yeah. I know. She's in, um, (laughs) she does like the fundraising and dance and stuff. And I'm the PR person. So like, we just talk the game. We talk to doctors all day long. (laughs) So we understand the basics. we don't do. Enough to go, "Uh uh-huh. Yeah, that sounds great. And we can go tell someone. What? Cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. I will write a story about that yeah, right away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always on Sarah's Facebook. Always. Do you want me on one of My mom is so excited. She was just asking me a lot of questions. She's like, can I join right, at you, any time? You I'm like, yeah. You ladies are live. Oh, good. Oh, good. Great. Okay. We'll stop talking. Tell me that. Yeah, you're good. Please keep talking. Just know that everyone will hear you. <laughs> Before I wonder if I found it. I don't know. There we go. Okay. I need. Because you have an Ella. Don't you? What? Your, one of your daughters is Ella. Yeah. yeah. I have an Ella. Oh, do you? Yeah, the little one that was here that day. And you probably don't remember. How old is she? She's no, I remember eight. your two daughters. Yeah. yeah. My Ella's seven. Oh, how funny. Yeah. I have a niece, Ella. Oh, yeah. She has a niece, Ella. She's not mine, but I claim her. <laughs> She's three. <laughs> Yes, to Maroon 5. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
forest. Sherry asked, what's my cool iPhone stand? Sherry, somebody sent this to me, a customer, because they're so amazing, because I was using a tape holder to hold my phone. So they just, <laughs> they just sent me a cell phone stand, <laughs> which was so nice of them. They're from, some, Kathy's from Oak Grove, Missouri, Paint and Horse Club. Where's Oak Grove? By Kansas City. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kathy, we're not that far away. I think Oak Grove has uh, part of the Katy Trail going by or through it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that mm -hmm. means. Mm -hmm. Okay. It yeah, because yeah, it's, yeah, it's a little bit out, like it's not Kansas City proper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, places. <laughs> yeah, places. Thanks. <laughs> Butte, mm. Gilmore's, Wisconsin. I've never had this kind before, Nicole. This is really good. Have you had that brand? No. Oh. Sarah's Thank just you. Sarah's having a sip of fermented belly juice. It's kombucha. Okay. I don't think I can say the brand. Oh. Can I? Probably not. I don't We've gotten in trouble before. <laughs> <laughs> I think they can tell it's a bottle of mayo. I'm glad you like it. We got people, we got Jenny's painting with her mom from Iowa. Welcome Jenny and mom. Houston, Texas, Tacoma, Washington, Illinois, because I couldn't say the city. I'm so sorry, Judy. Charleston, what time do we got? 14. 7.14. Okay, do I have everything? I just I just had a mental for guilt that I forgot something. I think we're good. Brushes. Oh yeah, we're set. Traced it. All over Massachusetts. Washington State. Oh. oh. Sorry, I'm tired it's tonight. Been cold. <laughs> it's been cold all day today. Yeah. And rainy and gross. Rainy. And now yeah. all warm and sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because it's nice and moist in the air now. Yes. <laughs> Wait, Keenan, can you hear me drink when I drink? <laughs> you can? 100%. Okay, I'll stop doing that, you guys. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Okay. We ready? We're is ready. it seven fifteen? Okay. This is your show. Yeah, we should probably get started. <laughs> <laughs> okay, welcome everybody to Let's Make Art. Thank you so much for being here tonight. We are painting the floral truck. Ooh. Please ooh and ah. ah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's very beautiful. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh, we have a bunch of people here tonight. I'm so excited. We have Devin is pa painting with us and Alex. Keenan is doing camera work. Hello. <laughs> he's not wearing a mic so uh, actually let me know I'll just be yelling he's gonna be yelling <laughs> the whole time and Nicole wonderful Nicole from hand lettering is here too so hi Nicole hi. so glad you're here um, we are using five colors tonight two paint brushes and five steps so let's just go step by step here so our first the first colors that we're using are we are using black, violet, rose red, deep blue, and dandelion yellow. So those five colors. We are using two paintbrushes, around six and around two. These are brand new. Whoa. I know. It's finally time. Wait a second. New brushes, new names? Ooh. Mm. Good idea, Keenan. We might have to answer that later because I'm not. I'm only having Hank and Tank since earlier <laughs> today. <laughs> we'll have to think about that. And we have um, five uh, five steps. Five steps that we're doing. So our very first step, we are going to color in our truck. Our second step, we are going to do the lights, the wheels, and the bumper. Third step, we're going to do the florals. Fourth step, we are going to do the license plate and the shadow. And the very last step is? Details. Details. Great job. Thank you. Good job, Keenan. I'm Thanks. proud of you. Thanks. Um, so you guys can start. <laughs> we can start with our outline. Then we'll do our oath. Then we'll do our warm-ups. Okay? That's how I decided it's going to go. 
Remember that time we set up a decision and it was like, this will happen this way every time? Yeah. I still think it's changed. I, th I still think I change it every time. I need to write it down. No, it's fine. Maybe I'll write it on my apron I mean, or that's something. That's how it's supposed to be. Okay, great. So, um, if you have an outline in your subscription box or in your kit, um, if not, that's okay. You can download it for free on our website. Just find our floral kit truck project, download the outline, and then you should have graphite paper in your subscription box. So it's folded in with the postcard. Um, what you are going to do is you're going to take your outline. Can you hand me that taped outline right there? My pleasure. So take your outline and then tape it to the paper like so using painter's tape or washi tape so it doesn't rip your paper. And then you are going to place the graphite paper underneath. You're gonna to wanna to do it dark side down. So there's like a darker side and like a not dark side, you know. <laughs> and then you're going to start tracing. Now I gave you a marker, use this edge, that, that point, yes. So when you use a marker to outline it, it will make your lines naturally lighter because it's a softer tip. I used a pen to do mine and it made it darker so you guys can see it fairly well because I want you guys to be able to see it while I'm painting. But if you're doing this at home, try and make the line as thin as possible. And you can go ahead and start okay. outlining. And also it's nice to do it in marker because then you can see where you've outlined it or not outlined it. I like to do like one line and then look underneath and see how dark or light that is. That might be too light mm -hmm. if you can't see it. Is that too light for you or are you okay? Sarah, yeah. could we move your drinks? Oh, is there a problem with like all of my beverages right three, in front of me? Of <laughs> <laughs> all right, fine. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so while they're tracing, um, I don't know if you guys saw the video that I posted earlier today, but the color that was in your subscription box, the deep blue, um, it ran slightly a little purple this batch than the batch that I used to paint the project, which is why some of you are having the hardest time getting that turquoisey color for your truck. And I'm so sorry about that. So if you want to learn more, you can just go to our Facebook group, Let's Make Art Watercolor. I do a little video about it. If you do not have colors from previous months like Azure Blue or Tahoe Blue, just shoot us an email at hello at letsmakeart.com. We can email, we'll um, ship you a little bottle of Azure Blue. Um, for free so you can make that great turquoisey color but we used azure blue last month in the subscription box so if you have that left over you can go ahead and use it or the um, Tahoe blue will also work wonderfully as well and uh, so sorry about that it shouldn't affect the other projects because we're not making that turquoisey color but it it did affect this one because we added yellow to make our tur turquoise and since the blue had a hint of purple in it it turned it muddy so this is where like color theory and complementary colors are super interesting because when, when one colors have undertones of other colors and you try and mix them, it gets a little complicated. So for example, if you have like an orangey red and you mix like blue with it to try and make purple, it's actually gonna make more of a muddy color than purple because it has orange undertones instead of like purple undertones. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. So I'm picturing it with all of my painting experience. Yeah, <laughs> Keenan's like, all of these things so, make sense now. <laughs> so I am so sorry about that, um, but, oh, somebody said no sound, but then they said sound is fine. If you can't hear me, let me know. Um, anyways, so sorry about that, you guys. But hopefully you'll have, you have some leftover paint, or if you don't, just shoot us an email. We can take care of it for you. Yes, good job. I think you mean, yes. Yes. You know, I was in Kansas City yesterday. There was a shirt that just said, yes, on it. And I had it in my hands to buy it. And I, I bought this one instead. But uh, that was a good choice. That's a good shirt. My shirt says Kansas City honey underneath it. Like uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's like a really comfy shirt. Thank you. It's like a JVN quote. I feel like it is. A what quote? JVN. Jonathan Van Ness. Oh, oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> I can't believe wow. you didn't catch that. I'm sorry, I've never heard JVN before and I apologize. No, it's fine, it's fine. 
I've never heard his name I shortened just like love that. that show. And I, I do love it. Me and Keenan talk about that show yeah. regularly. I told him to roll up his sleeves yesterday like Tan France. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do it. French yeah. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm I'm still going to use the deep blue in the box to mix it. You can still get you're going to get more of a green color and you can still get something similar to it. It's just not going to be as saturated. It's going to be kind of a little grayer. But so I'm still going to use that true blue so we're kind of all on the same page. But I did also put Tahoe blue in here for you ladies if you wanted to get that more um, turquoisey color you can. Okay, let's do our oath first. So I need everybody to raise their right hand. And you have to repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> high fives back there. <laughs> We're feeling it tonight. This is going to be good. I can just tell. Keenan high fived after he did that promise to have fun. Like, it's good. Okay. <laughs> So go ahead and grab your paintbrush. We're going to do some warm-ups. So the very first thing that we are going to do is our different values. So value is all the darkness or the lightness of a color. So it actually has nothing to do with the hue of a color. It's all about the lightness or darkness of it. Now in watercolor, what's really amazing about it, why I love it so much, is if you want a lighter value, instead of adding white to your paint, you just add more water. That makes the paint more transparent, which makes the white of the paper show through more, and that's how you get a lighter color. So, I'm going to grab my paintbrush. I'm gonna hit it off the side of my cup after I get it wet, because I don't want a dripping mess. I'm going to grab a color, and I'm just gonna make a rectangle with that color. Isn't that a good color? This is violet. That is vibrant. So when you fill up your paintbrush, like the belly of your brush, with a color and go straight towards the pad with that, then it, this is your dark value, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush a couple of times, hit it off the side of my cup, and do my next swatch. Now this will be your medium value, and then hit your water again a couple of times, hit off the side of your cup. Ooh, look at that light value. And here's our light value. Very nice. And you guys can keep on going. If you still have color on your brush, I think, I, I think that's probably the lightest I can go for mine. So, when we are talking about, oh, this is a white pen. That's why it's not working on my paper. <laughs> <laughs> Can I use your marker? You Thank you. I don't. I found it on the shelf. Nicole, is this yours? No, I like, well, it. I like it too. Someone's missing a white. Pen. Somebody's missing <laughs> a white pen. No, nope. it's my desk drawer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when we are painting and I'm talking about different values, I want you to look back on our warm ups and like around this range is our dark, around this range is, range is our medium, and this is our light. And this is a barely there color. Like, you can barely see this, but in watercolor, those are important too. You can't just play in this realm the entire time because then you don't have the full range of value, so then you don't have that full uh, range of like form because those various values really matter. Um, Sue asked who my painting guests are. These are this is Devin and Alex, Sue. Thank you for asking. They're wonderful. They're here to paint <laughs> and to party. Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> is painting and party different? I don't know. No, it's a painting party. Yes. Okay. So then the next thing that we are going to do is we are actually going to practice the same thing except in one smooth stroke. So then it transitions from dark to light at the same time. So same thing, I'm going to grab my brush, get it wet, it hit off the side of my cup, pick up some color. I'm going to do my dark value triangle and then immediately I'm going to dip it in the water, hit it off the side of the cup and right where I left off I'm going to keep going to the right. Rinse again, keep going and just keep on go, keep, keep, keep going <laughs> until you can't go anymore and it just turns into white paper. And this is how you can get a smooth transition of value 
Now the thing I want you to remember with watercolor that I have learned, especially with if you're new to watercolor and you haven't done it before, it is our instinct to mess with this. As in, after we've done this, we want to go, oh, let's keep on, <laughs> let's just keep on doing this over and over again. Let's just work this back and forth and just like keep on working it. But you can see that the more I work it back and forth, the more I'm losing that value change and it's all evening out into one value as you can kind of see here. So when you are trying to have different value transitions, try not to go back and forth too much because eventually it's just gonna even out. And that's just because when something is wet and you like work it back and forth, the color itself is gonna spread in that wet area and just kind of like even. So the next thing that we are going to practice is we are going to practice our florals. So grab, I'm gonna to switch to my round two for this. Now the really wonderful thing about florals and watercolor, and they work so well together. I know we really stress out about flowers, but let, like just do like some sort of circular marks and it's like, it reads as a flower. You did it, congratulations. But I'm gonna show you guys how to do like more of a rose. <laughs> Sorry, did that come out saucy? <laughs> yeah. You did it. That's all, all you got to do. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to grab some red, and I just want to show you how you can... Oh, that made orange because I mixed yellow in it. That makes sense. But anyways. It's like a ketchup sandwich color. <laughs> ketchup. I'm going to actually mix my red with my violet because I love that color it gets. It's like a magenta almost. Is that right? I'm mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Okay. So when you're doing like rose-shaped flowers, you want to start off with smaller marks in the center. And then as you go out, your marks get longer and they're alternating. So you see how like where there's a space in between my marks, that's where I actually do my next mark. And I just keep on going around. And then you eventually get some water and start doing it with water and kind of spreading out this color with a little bit of water. And then you can even like drop in some more color in there, let it bleed out, kind of like that. So, but we're just gonna do that on a small scale. So if you just wanna like practice this a little bit, you can. But it's a little hard because like our brain is telling us to have them all line up perfectly like this. This is what our brain is telling us to do. And you have to be like, no, don't do that. So just make sure that they're kind of alternating and overlapping. Staggered, that's a better word maybe. And they don't have to be perfect. Oh, we can switch. Judy, don't worry Judy, we can, we can show the paint. Hold on a second. Here, I'm gonna give you this one. Alex, will you move your butcher tray in the middle and I'll paint off of yours? We got it, Maria. We got it, you guys. Don't worry about it. Thanks for telling us. Okay. And then when you go in to put in the water, you want to leave some white spaces, which is also something your brain is going to fight you on. You think in your mind like, okay, this is a flower, so I need to like cover all of it with color. But when you color all of it with color, you lose your highlights and your low lights, which is kind of what we want to keep because it's giving that, that kind of like hint of illusion of like layers and depth. So after you do your little flowers and you're alternating it, and when you add water to it, you want to make sure that you're still doing the same brush strokes, but just with water. So it's like, so I'm still leaving some highlights. And then I'm also like just doing some with just water too. So you're not, see how that definitely kept more of its floral shape than this when I painted the entire thing. So just kind of mess with that. Like really, really pay attention to how much water you're putting into your flowers when you go back in and put in your flowers. Move this just a little bit more. And then because we're doing it smaller, also practice doing it on a really small scale. So it's like really tiny. 
do a couple of them next to each other. Yeah, very nice. Beautiful. And you can also play with the um, distance between the petals. So for example, and maybe I'll do this big so you guys can see a little bit better. But if I'm going in, Yes. <laughs> so if I'm doing my petal spaces around, like these are really tight next to each other. So you can have the petals really tight or you can do some where the petals are more spaced. See the difference between them? I don't think that there's a right or a wrong. It just depends on the look you want your flower to have. So mess with that if you don't think if, if you don't like how far space they are, that it's not reading as a flower, we'll tighten them up. It's not a big deal. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, a couple other flowers you can, um, you can make is if you do like um, lavender. I'll do these all big so you guys can see better. Lavender is kind of almost like bluish purple a little bit. Um, I just kind of keep like a triangle shape in mind. So I just do a bunch of dots that just end up kind of going to a point at the top. Like so. And maybe this reads as more like, um, I don't know, I really should research flowers more. But... <laughs> And then you can put stems on them. There, lavender. Uh, Elizabeth says that my colors look creamy and hers are looking dense and dark. Maybe having a little bit more water with your colors. If your painting is being is too dark, um, and you don't have these hints of like soft values like light values or medium values maybe use a little bit more water and see if that helps very nice beautiful yes now another type of flower that I did is I kind of like I just, I wasn't thinking of a specific flower, but like they're kind of droopy. I just think of them as like a bush. So, and I just do marks like this. And then I rinse my brush and I introduce a little bit of water and spread it out a little bit. And then I had some of them like hang off the truck. So it's just like, it's just dashes, you guys. I'm not sitting there and doing like perfect petals and shaping every single one. I'm just giving the hint that there is a organic shape that is colorful and it's gonna read as a flower. And I know that that's weird for your brain to accept, but just like, trust me. Yeah. And you can mess, you can mess with um, how close they are to each other. Um, some of them can overlap and run into each other because that's true to nature. That's what we would see. Another thing that I like to do is like if I'm doing this and playing with water like this and there it's all a little bit too light sometimes I'll take strong color and just like drop it in when it's wet and let that like move and bleed around within that wet area and you'll get some really interesting colors and textures. Yes. Very can you, nice. Can you do a sunflower? Just one out real quick, just yes, 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 yes. Yes, I can, I can, I can do it. Sunflowers, they just have big brown centers and smaller yellow petals. So you gotta make brown. To make brown, you just gotta make complementary colors, mix complementary colors. So you can mix the purple with the yellow and get a brown. So here's my brown like so. It has a darker spot in the middle, so I can drop a little bit of black in there. And then it has yellow leaves, so I rinse my brush. 
and you just do smaller leaves around it. And it has a couple layers, so you can do one layer, you can do another one. Look at that sunflower. That's nice. It's like I do this for a living or what? something. <laughs> do a challenge round. Oh, I guess they can't see that very well. Sorry that one's so tiny, you guys. I ran out of room on my warm-up yeah, sheet. change angles for them. Yeah. There you go. Cute. And if you want one from like an angle, we actually did a sunflower project that's more from an angle, but it's essentially the same thing, except your perfect circle turns more into like a disc or an oval, I guess, like that. Or an eye shape. Or an eye shape or a, a lip shape, a mouth shape. <laughs> and then you do your petals from there. Okay, thank you. No, it's okay. I forgot I forgot to put black on the palette, you guys. I'm sorry. Oh dear. Oh dear. If I can get it together. Keenan, why didn't you remind me? I don't really know what You didn't my even job, have to call yourself uh, out. I was like, <laughs> so was like I whispered that <laughs> for you. <laughs> okay. And then of course you can customize this. You can do any type of flower that is special to you. People have been customizing this like crazy, which is so fun. I've loved seeing all of your guys' amazing ideas. You're so creative. And if you don't feel like making it up and just doing what I did, there's no shame in that too. Sometimes your brain just wants a rest, right? And you just wanna like make something. So, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to go over before we start, but I think we got it. Maybe go over leaves really quick. So, to mix green, I'm mixing my yellow and my blue together. And then to do my leaf shape, I'm going to outline my leaf and then a stem. And to get a thin stem, you are going to want to use the tip of your brush. So a vertical hold and really light pressure. If I'm pressing hard, this is how thick my line can be. Okay, so really like pay attention to the angle of your brush and you can draw out your leaf and then fill it in. You could even do a one stroke leaf. So what that looks like is just adjusting your pressure. So soft pressure, pressure, and then you press down and then you lighten back up and there's a one stroke leaf. Whatever one is better for you. It, I don't think, it's just whatever you're comfortable with. I do both. I mix it up. Very nice. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Okay. People love your sunflower. Oh, thanks. Wait, are you talking to me? Yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> well, I didn't. My sun, about my sunflower. Well, they were painting sunflowers too. Okay. Oh, I didn't. Keenan. Touche. Touche. Okay, yeah, thank you. Every <laughs> <laughs> No, your sunflower turned the out great. Professional ones probably the better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start. We're gonna start with step one. We're gonna start filling in our trunk. Oh, I forgot to do a line here. That's okay. I'll just put it in later. So this has a lot of different planes, and I talked about this more in the pre-recorded tutorial. And the way that we show that this is not a completely flat, smooth surface is by value change. So when we put a darker value, that's given the illusion that it indents. Is that the right word? Indent? Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. And then <laughs> when it's a lighter value, it's sticking out. And it's not a huge difference, so the value changes between them aren't extreme, but there is a change. And that's how you show that it's not completely smooth and flat. So. We're gonna go through and we are going to start by putting in our darker values, blending them out, and putting in our lighter values at the same time. So, I'm gonna grab my water. Now, I'm going to just use the colors that were in our box. I'm not gonna get the same turquoise with that color because of how that blue has a purple hint to it, but I'm still gonna try. And then there's the Tahoe blue if you wanna use it. I didn't give you Tahoe Blue, I'm really sorry about that. Here's Tahoe Blue if you want to use it. 
Nicole's taking a picture, so I just made a face. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of my blue. Do we have a taco blue paint? Taco blue? Did I say taco? No, someone said, uh, she thought you said taco blue. <laughs> that sounds but great. Like, hmm. I kind of love that. There, like, oh, nothing oh, wrong with that. Okay. Can get behind taco blue. I can get behind that too. And then I'm going to grab the tiniest bit of yellow to introduce to my blue. And then I'm going to add lots of water. So you can see it's kind of creating like a desaturated blue, which I'm actually kind of into. So I'm fine with that. It gives it kind of like that vintage feel. Um, you, if you want it more green, mix in more yellow. Okay. So I'm using my number six brush because I'm going to do larger areas. And um, I'm going to start off with the tailgate right here. Did you see all the comments where they were like, it's called the tailgate? <laughs> I assume that like later we were like, wait a second. Oh, I'm silly. so sorry, you guys. Okay. How do they know? How, how, how do you guys know all written? this stuff? <laughs> Life, Keenan, that's how they know all these things. Okay, so I'm going to start with this outer line right here and start putting in my color. Like that. So I'm going to do it on the edges first. And then I'm going to spread this a little bit. And maybe I'll give it a, a little bit more hint of green to get a little bit more of that turquoisey color. Now I, um, actually Nicole, I think there's a pencil on that shelf. Will you grab that for me? Cause I'm missing this bottom line and I think it will throw people off as I pay to get. So, this middle, this first section right here, like this middle square is actually going to be more of the darker value. So thank you, ma'am. So let's start, let's like kind of outline on the inside of that. Add water to it. We're focusing. I'm actually really, oh yeah. Oh yeah, can I show yours? Just <laughs> look at this color. That's beautiful, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so again, you can email us if you wanna get that color. I'm actually kinda of digging this like, like it's kinda of reminds me of um, gray, like a smoky color. I love it. Yeah, it's really nice. And you guys were so nice when I posted that video. You guys were commenting and just being so supportive and kind. And some of you were just like, I kind of liked the color I got. It was more green. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Your color looks like a worker a worker truck. Like it's been used. It's used. Yeah. It's Listen, my truck is a heart. We're it's not about we're truck. not about bright colors here, no. okay? <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. So here is my darker color on the middle. I'm going to skip this tri this rectangle that's right next to it because if I start to paint this, then the color that I just laid down is going to blend into that and it will will lose that value variation that we want. So I actually like skip around it. So I'm actually going to go to the next rectangle and start filling that in. That one's going to be a little bit darker. And then I forgot this bottom one, so I'm gonna put this in really quick. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna work around the outer line, putting that darker value in, and then just use water to kind of spread out that color. like that. And then this bar that's right above the uh, license plate, that one's a lighter value, but what's underneath it is a darker value. So I'm going to put that in. 
And if you guys get mixed up on what is what, don't stress. It's really not a big deal. It really isn't. Just keep on painting. Very nice. Yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, good job. Wonderful, wonderful. You guys are doing amazing. Okay, now I'm going to do my um, wheel, wheel wells. Wheel fortune, wheel, oh, wheel wells, yes. Is that what those are? Yeah? yeah, wheel wells. Alex says yes, so it's true. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start with the, so this is like the top part and then there's like a weird crease and a shadowed part right here. So I'm actually going to put in my shadowed part first. So right on this line, it's a little bit darker here. Do it on the same side. And then it's gonna blend out to my um, tail lights. Like so. I'm not going to do the top part of the wheel just yet because again, if I try to make that area wet and I hit the shadowy part or the darker value part that I just put in, I'll lose it. It will blend out. So this is where watercolor is interesting because you're kind of moving. It's good in the way that you have to like build up the painting simultaneously and like move around it kind of like a dance. You know, you're kind of like two steps forward doing a, like a foxtrot or something. Keenan knows. Can't foxtrot. You can't? I don't think so. I think you could. I think you could. I mean, do you know I how? can. Have you been I'm taught? Just, I maybe. Foxtrot, there's like a waltz, there's a foxtrot, there's a lot of names. Listen, like next that. next tutorial, we're going to spend the first five minutes and we'll do the foxtrot, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Nicole, you yeah. in? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to start to do like the very outer edge of my tailgate here. So you can start putting in that same color. The biggest thing that you're going to want to pay attention to is between this section and this section, you want to make sure you have a shadow right here because this is where the tailgate actually like opens and closes. So there is an actual crease here in the truck. It's actually separated so the door can open. So you got to make sure that that value is darker and that communicates that it's a deeper space in between there. So. What did we call that on the tutorial? <laughs> Not the tailgate. We called it the door. We called it the truck door the or truck something. Door. Yeah. <laughs> the back truck door. I think is what you meant anyway. Yeah. Now this part at the very top, keep this a lighter value if you can, simply because we're gonna be putting like flowers over top on some of it. So like don't go too dark with your value because watercolor is transparent. When you put flowers on top of something, it's still gonna show the color underneath. So that's why like when I know that I'm gonna layer or overlap, I'll try and do a slightly lighter value so it's not super difficult to see the thing that I'm laying on top. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna actually go back in on these sides and put in a darker value so it's very clear that it's, you know, like hinges there. So you just kind of go back in and then you can blend it out. Is that rain? Yeah. It's been raining here in Missouri. Sarah, can you address the different sides of the paper? There are a few people who did the other side, but I was saying that it's totally okay. Oh, yes. Okay, so there are two sides of the paper. Now, with this type of paper, the Canton watercolor paper, it's actually not a huge deal. Um, you usually you want to paint on the rougher side so the side that has slightly more texture on it um, but if you don't and you end up painting on the back it's not the end of the world i accidentally paint on the back of sheets 
all the time and it actually doesn't make a huge effect to my painting. So, but if you do wanna paint on the right side, it's just rougher texture. And then if you get different paper that's like a heavier weight or 100% cotton, then it's a little bit more obvious what's the front and the back because it's really toothy. And toothy just means that it like has stronger indents. Is it Thank rougher you. or more rough? Ooh. Keenan, why would you ask me that question? <laughs> I said that too. Because it's, why not? You know, it's kind of fun. Well, do you know the answer to that? I'm pretty sure it's more rough, but rougher is an adjective. That Alex, what do you say? It's either. It's either. <laughs> and I trust Alex. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. You're fine, Keenan. You're fine. <laughs> okay. So now what I'm going to go, go in and do is like the painted areas of my darker values are pretty dry now. So I'm actually just going to take a damp brush and kind of pull from the color that I already laid out to fill in my lighter value rectangles. Now, if your colors are not blending and it's just water and you're getting frustrated, take a deep breath. Don't get mad at this. Just pick up a little bit of color. Problem solved. Sometimes my paints like to blend out really easy and they work with me well. And sometimes they're just a little stubborn and I don't get mad at it. I just say, okay, I'll just pick up a little bit of color on my brush. And then that way I'm still happy in painting, you know? Yeah. Let's make this fun. Okay, same thing for this rear area. And then I also like to like, after I do this, I give it a second to dry, and then I can go in and redefine some of those spaces again if, if I've lost it a little bit. So don't stress if you blend it out too much and you lost those different values, we can go back in, you guys. Okay. Now I'm actually gonna do the same thing with the top of my wheel wells. Just kind of using water, it's a nice light value. Gosh, I really actually love the color of this truck. Very nice, very nice, yes. And when you're doing layers like this, you're gonna get blooms. Blooms are hard lines. Um, and that is because it's all about timing. So if something has dried and you re-wet the area and put in more color, only where that area was re-wet is where you're gonna get a hard line on the edge. And that's called a watercolor bloom. Don't get mad at those. I know that we get really mad at those, especially if we're used to other mediums because they don't happen with other mediums. And then you think you're doing it wrong and I'm telling you, you are not. This is why watercolor is amazing. It just happens. It's beautiful. We appreciate those accidental elements because they give interest to our painting and they make them your own. If one is super hard, that it's like it's all you can see and you can't get over it, just take a damp brush, blend. Work it back and forth and it will just soften that line. It won't erase it completely, but it will soften it. Okay, so I'm gonna actually define this part a little bit better. And when you're defining edges, you don't have to go with a really dark line around the entire thing. You can just do it kind of here and there. Because sometimes if we do it around the entire thing and make sure things are perfectly outlined, it sometimes will flatten what we're trying to make. Um, because light hits things differently, so hard edges are more pronounced in some areas than others. So if we like do such a harsh line around every single element, that's just not how true to how we see it in person, right? Think of like a spider web and how the light hits a spider web. You don't see all those outlines at once. The sun changes it. Which is why you run into spider webs. Which is why you run into spider webs all the time. Always. Even if they're not there. Have you read the like statistic of how many spiders you eat while you're sleeping? Eight <laughs> a year. I read it was a more. A year? Yeah. Is it more? Yeah. I thought it was a year. 
seems like Alex disagrees. I thought you said eight. <laughs> I don't trust Alex. Did you say eight? Alex she right. said eight, and he said I, eight, and I think that's wrong. I heard eight. I thought oh, I was see, eight. no, yeah. Alex okay, I heard eight. fourteen. <laughs> I thought I heard fourteen. Okay, me and Devin are right. Oh, no, I, it's I like a it. year. It yeah. I don't know what's true or not. I like you. I know. Alex. I think I'm going if you're to if you're arachnophobic, I'm really sorry. This must be a really hard conversation. Right, that was the right phobia I said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Nope. So we can talk about something else. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Now we're going to do the top part of the truck. And again, if you're going to make any part slightly darker, do the very top, but do not do this entire thing a really dark value because again we're putting flowers over it. So it's like, we don't want to leave it white because there are spaces in between the flowers where we see the truck and we don't want those to be white and trying to paint around the flowers after they're done would kind of be a nightmare. So just a really soft, soft wash on this back part and leave the window white. Beth asks, who counts the spiders? Mm -hmm. Beth, That's what a question. great question. Like, how do people know that? <laughs> There's yeah. some lab somewhere. Where yeah, they somewhere like they're doing watch, research. They like let loose spiders. And <laughs> they like, just let people sleep in a room filled with spiders. And they're like, What's okay. Your Good luck. Watch sleep. <laughs> Perfect. We've got a task. Perfect. For <laughs> <laughs> Release the spiders. Beth, totally valid point. Thank you for bringing that up. It makes me think about things like that because I'm like, how many people just make up those things and then it just exactly. becomes. Seventy-three percent of people make facts up. You just made that up. Keenan. get out of here. <laughs> so again, if you want a lighter wash and watercolor, all you got to do is add water. That's it. And if you're not used to painting with watercolor, sometimes the lightness of this will freak you out and make you think you, like you need to make it super saturated with color. And the answer is you do not, my friend. Keep it nice and light. Mm -hmm. Very nice, very nice. Okay. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Tamara says she's never sleeping again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry we brought that up. Just sleep on your face. <laughs> Just sleep on, sleep on your face. No <laughs> holes. <laughs> okay. Okay, that was step one which is a very long step. So you guys have been doing great. Sometimes steps take like two minutes and sometimes they take a long time. So I appreciate you guys sticking with it. This one did take a little bit longer. Okay, now we're gonna move on to step two where we are going to do the lights, the wheels, and the bumper. So let's start with the bumper. Why not? Now for the bumper, we're going to make a gray color because if you see here, I kind of have like a really thin outline on the bottom and that's to show that the bumper goes out, like if you were to look at it from the side, it goes out like this. So this is the top part, this is the underneath part. Can they see that on my, maybe I'll do it on the I scratch. See that in real life. I'll do it on the scratch, that makes more sense. So if like this is the shape of my bumper here, so if the light is coming up here, this part would be highlighted, this part is gonna be a low light, and that's how we show that it's dimensional and not flat, okay? So that's why this bottom part is gonna be shadowed. So we're gonna paint that using gray. I still could have made that darker, sorry guys. So I'm gonna add a little bit, I'm gonna grab a tiny bit of black and add water to it to make a gray. That's, that's all I gotta do. And then you're just gonna go along this bottom edge with that gray. Like that. And again, it's just a very soft, soft hint of gray. It's not like super dark. Very nice. Fender. On the fender. Have I been calling it a bumper? Uh, what have I been calling it? <laughs> yeah, I think you said bumper. Okay, fender. Sorry guys. Who said that? Sandra, thank you. Okay. I think, I think it is a bumper. I think a fender is on the front of the truck. 
bumpers on the bumpers on the back. On the side, fenders are on the side. Yeah, sides. It's a bumper. It's a real bumper. Gosh, we need to have diagrams of all these things we paint. <laughs> Kenan, isn't yeah. this your job? This makes it interesting. <laughs> Just kidding. It's not your no job. You're really great. <laughs> <laughs> Kenan's like, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> okay, so um, we're gonna let that dry for a second. We're gonna move on to the um, tail lights. Yep. So, <laughs> so also what I noticed about this red paint is for some reason this red paint is taking a little bit longer to dry than normal. So what you can do to offset that is one, you can mix in a tiny bit of yellow because I noticed that if I mix colors in with my red, they dry to normal time. I don't know why. But um, so if you use or if you mix water in with your red, that will also help it dry a little bit faster. So I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow in there anyway because those tail lights are kind of like an orangey red. And then I have some different spots outlined here where there are highlights and where there are low lights. Um, so I'm just going to start putting in this color and I'm going to work around my highlights and low lights. And if you can't tell what is what, it really doesn't matter. These are like weirdly shaped and reflective. So just as long as you have both, highlights and low lights and then this medium color you're going to be fine it doesn't i wasn't super technical with the placement of those things so don't stress out and then to get like a darker red you can mix it in with black or even purple So once you put in these red things, just be careful of your wrists and smearing it. Yes. <laughs> did that, did that I happen? This beautiful painting, oh, and then I stuck good. my hand and like stamped oh. red everywhere. I was so mad. Right at the end. I was awful. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I for sure have done that before. Sarah. Yes. Gina is asking when you get to the lights, which is very convenient because I just saw the question. Yeah. Uh, can you address why some on Facebook were having trouble with the red bleeding? Oh, like smearing or bleeding? So smearing I just talked about. Bleeding also because sometimes this, and I met, I was playing with this paint and I didn't run into the bleeding issue, but sometimes um, if the color is super concentrated and you lay it down straight from paint to paper, um, it will bleed on the edges. So something that you can do to counteract that so it does not bleed off the edge and get fuzzy edges is you actually put the water down first so fill in your tail light with the water and then drop in the red and it will not have fuzzy edges it will stay within those water lines so that is something that you can do What? Marcy says, I am so far behind. And then she goes, I am not speeding while painting this truck. <laughs> I think she's been making sneaky puns. <laughs> well, you guys know me. You know I love a good pun. I can slow down, too. If I'm going too fast, you, you ladies you tell me. Check yeah, we can do a check-in. Give people a minute. Okay, let's start with Alex. Oh, I don't. <laughs> hey, it's okay. We don't compare our work. So <laughs> first of all, the colors that you got are really great. And I think actually, and this is why I really love mixing colors. Some people don't love it, but I do because you can see here where it starts to separate the colors. And I think that's so cool because you get the coolest colors within there. Now, one thing that I would suggest, is it okay if I paint mm -hmm, on this? Please. Is I'm gonna go in and just define some of these lines just a little bit more. So just like this edge, I just want to like go across it and make it nice and straight. And we can do the same thing on this side. Because I think these textures are really wonderful, but also when you're working with something as structured as a truck, you want to make sure that some of the lines are nice and like, Hua. so we don't have to outline the entire thing. <laughs> are you laughing at my huh? Yes. You don't have to outline the entire thing, but just give people the hint of like, 
no, 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 this is actually a really strong edge right here. I don't have to go crazy, but just so you know, it's there. So I'm going to do that on the next one. And just kind of redefine these spaces here. But I think that the blooms and the watercolor textures you got within these, like right there, is really beautiful. I wouldn't touch that. I wouldn't blend that out. I think it looks great. Can you mix two paint with liquid? You can mix two paint with liquid. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. You can also mix these liquid watercolors with gouache. You can mix them with, I know an illustrator who actually mixes them with acrylic. I've never tried that myself, but give it a go. Why not? Terry says, yes, please slow just a couple miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll slow it down. I'm just going to go in here. Yeah, very nice. There we go. Okay. And then the other thing I would say is I just want the tight tail lights to be a little bit red, more red. So is it okay if I go in there? Okay. So I'm just going to drop some red in there. Now be careful. This might take a bit to dry. So watch your hands. Watch your hands. <laughs> if you play piano, it's the same thing. Keep your wrists <laughs> lifted off. Balance at least six quarters on <laughs> Okay. I think that looks really nice. Beautiful job. I love your textures. Okay. Now we have Devin's. Okay. This is looking really beautiful. I can definitely see the different planes in between here. You have some good edges. I think your tail lights are nice and red. I am going to put in a little bit darker areas on your tail lights if that's okay. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to drop in like a more purpley red and give that illusion of that reflective like low light that's in there. But it's looking really nice. Good job. Okay. Thank you. Again, lift your wrists. <laughs> okay. So. Last question. Yes. Are the liquid paints light sensitive? If so, how do I preserve my painting? Liquid watercolors are dye based, which means they're fugitive, which means they are light sensitive. You're not going to want to put these babies in direct sunlight. They will fade over time. But also, just so you guys know, even watercolors that you're painting with that are um, light fast, you still don't want to put those in direct sunlight. Direct sunlight really breaks down art in general, so that's just something to be aware of. However, there are a couple things that you can do. One of them is there is a fixative spray. Somebody even tested it in our group. I'll, I'll share it tomorrow, but she even did like a comparison where she put it in the window and there was essentially, there's like no change. So there is a spray that you can do like a UV protectant spray. There's also UV protected glass. I've never tried that personally, so I can't say if that works or not. One thing that I personally do though is I actually always scan in my paintings and digitize them and then that way if people want to print I can give them a print. I know that's a little bit more complicated and maybe not in everybody's skill set but we are working on tutorials on how to do that. So I will be happy to share that information with you and that's why I like working with the liquid watercolors more than um, two paints because the colors on them are so vibrant. That's the trade-off. With dye-based colors you get vibrancy and you get like liquids I think blend really easy and they like do really well in the wet on wet technique. That's why I love them. Um, so that's why I like working with them and the light fastness for me doesn't really matter because I digitize my work and also it's like I do this for fun. These aren't works of art that are going to be hanging in a museum forever. I just like it just makes me happy to paint so that's why I'm okay with it okay we're gonna keep keep on keeping on with step two so let's do our tires so I'm gonna take my black and I'm gonna follow this shape here so I'm gonna do like the left side and then like the front like so now I know that we want to make the tires totally round. However, tires are on the ground and so they're not perfectly round on the ground. There is like a flat space where they hit that ground because the ground is flat. It kind of reminds me, have you ever seen like a slow motion of like a ball bouncing? Yes. And it actually like flattens out. 
it's like an illusion, kind of like that. So I know that you see this and you're like, this tire looks totally flat, but it's like, no, it's just because like that's where it meets the ground and it has to have contact somewhere on that surface. Also, the fact that you just shared about tires being on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> really helpful. Can't find that information anywhere else. <laughs> Keenan. Yes. You're funny. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> that could have gotten so many points. <laughs> you never really know what I'm gonna say. Are you fired? Do I like you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sandra just said that she's read that fixatives will distort the color over time because of the acid in them. Sandra, thank you for that tip. I'm not sure. So if somebody has experience with using fixatives over time, let me know. I would love to share that information. Okay. So, and then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just like pull the color from that black and fill in this other space here. Now it might blend out to where like, it's not super, like it kind of evens out. That's okay, not a big deal. Mine blended out fairly evenly and I wasn't mad about it. Cause I'm like, well, it's a tire. You know what I mean? People can tell it's a tire. However, if it, if it is too light in gray, that might be distracting. So don't be afraid to do another wash on top of it if it's like sticking out how light that gray is. Now there's also like a black section around the license plate. So it goes on either side. And there's like a space in between the bumper and the truck. I know we talked about it a bunch. Is it a bumper? It's a bumper. Yes. Okay, thank you. Now I'm all insecure, I'm questioning <laughs> myself. Okay, so just kind of fill the, that in. It kind of goes on the top and then meets into the bumper here. There's also like a black um, ridge right underneath the license plate that I forgot to draw on, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. Because I live life on the edge. I like to just paint things. I'm pretty sure that's a fact. <laughs> pretty sure that's how I like to live my life. Okay. <laughs> so. Just put that in. Yeah. There we go. There are little, like, white dots on the edge for, like, where the screws are. Or I'm assuming they're screws. I don't really know what they are. Yeah. I was looking at multiple reference photos. I don't know. I mean, who really knows? Who knows, really? Maybe it should be our job to know. <laughs> we are teaching people this. No, no. We are not teaching the anatomy <laughs> of the truck. Teaching the painting. Yeah, there we go. If you want to switch to your round two for this part, you're more than welcome to because a round two is smaller. So sometimes it's easier to do those smaller edges with a smaller brush. However, and this is where I think paintbrushes, round paintbrushes are amazing, is you have a nice narrow tip with your round six as well. So if you can do a light pressure, you can still get a really thin line with your round six. So, you know, try it out. Just do whatever feels comfortable for you. I don't think that there is a wrong way. Man, I really love the color of this truck. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, Ashley said, she asked if this truck is freehand. Ashley, this truck is not freehanded. Can you hear me that outline? Yeah. This is what our outline looks like. So the only thing that's freehand is the flowers part. But I like doing things like that because then it, you guys have the opportunity to make it your own. So the outline is included in kits and subscriptions and all that fun stuff. Did you also mention that it's online for free? Well, yes, now you did, Keenan, and thank you. You're welcome. I don't know if they can hear me. Online for free, also, on our website. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're just gonna do one more thing and then we're gonna move on to our florals, which is I put little rest spots on my bumper because why not, you know what I mean? You can make this truck however you want. 
So I grabbed, I made like a little bit of brown and you can put a little bit of red in there because sometimes rust kind of turns like orangey. So you can even use straight orange if you want, mix in some black. Just kind of a muddy color and you can just do some spots in some areas. It doesn't, I just kind of like did it randomly. Don't stress too much about this part. Did you put some on the license plate? Yeah. Nice. I know, thanks. That's cool. Some of you guys' license plates, they were looking so good. Like they were so detailed with little illustrations and. I don't think I, I only saw like a few of them and they were fairly similar to yours. I'll have to, I'll have to share some because they were so great. One guy did a seasons one. Did you see that? And he had each license plate, and it had like numbers and stuff, but it spelled spring, winter. Are you serious? Oh, it was really cool. Yeah, and he did four seasons of it. That's yeah. amazing. I his name. I wish I did, but it was on the group. Yeah. Well, and he, like spelled spring, but it was like five p one. Whoever you are, oh, amazing, oh, amazing cool. job. It was really really cool. I love how creative you guys are. It's Video so great. Blurry. Video is blurry on the top cam. It may be the internet connection. Oh yeah, okay. Okay. So, we got our rust spots. They're kind of fun. I even dropped in some stronger color in some areas because rust sometimes is really concentrated and dark and sometimes it's soft, so, you know, play with that. This is your painting, so you get to make those decisions. Okay, now we're gonna move on to our flowers. So, let's start this, you guys. Let's do it. I I'm just gonna go and start putting my flowers in. So I'm gonna start on my right hand side and move across. If you wanna start on your left hand side and move across, that actually might make more sense because you won't smear, but just do what feels right for you. So I'm gonna start with doing my larger, like these purpley flowers here, and then just start filling it in. So one thing I want you guys to keep in mind when you're doing these flowers is don't stress about the shape themselves because when you do that, you tend to overwork it. The other thing I want to point out is if we want to give the illusion of depth, as in there's flowers across the entire bed of the truck, then the ones in the very front are going to be bigger and more detailed. And then as they go back, they're going to get lighter in value and less detailed and that's going to give the illusion that there's some behind these flowers if you did them all super strong detailed right here same value then it's going to look like there's only flowers right here at the tail end if you want it to look like they are all in the entire bed of the truck see how these are like softer and high and smaller that's what you guys want to keep in mind. So the ones right here are bigger more detailed as they kind of move back they're going to get smaller and lighter and less detailed. Okay. So, I'm going to mix my red with my violet and get this really gorgeous purpley color. And I'm just gonna start making these kind of marks around here. And after I do a couple of these marks, remember to leave spaces. Remember, these are just brush marks. They're kind of roundish. Um, but again, I'm not sitting there painting every single petal, right? And then I'm going to have some kind of go over the... <sighs> tailgate. Tailgate. Thank you. Back door. Tailgate. All I saw in my brain was door. <laughs> <laughs> and then what I like to do also is after I do this, I'll, I'll rinse my brush and just get it kind of damp and use water to spread some of it out. And then that way I get a, a change in value in my flowers also. Now the other thing I want you guys to keep in mind is when you are doing, and maybe I'll do this on the outline so I can draw directly on it. When you're trying to put something over the tailgate most of the time, we, you have to take, you have to account for this lip that's here. So if your flower bush is here and you want it hanging over, it's actually not gonna go straight down like this. 
because then that's pretending like there's not an edge here for the tailgate. So when you're doing your flower bed, you want it to kind of come off at an angle and then go over the tailgate. See how this look makes it seem like this is actually a dimension that it has to work around? Where if you do it straight down, it kills the illusion that there is a tailgate here and an edge to the truck. So you need to keep that edge in mind when you're painting it. So again, if you're gonna do flowers kind of coming off like I did on my purples here, it starts here and then it comes and it angles off, same thing. This is where it is, but it comes and it angles off. If you do it straight down, it's not gonna seem like this is a real thing, okay? Keenan, are you gonna do a close up of the flowers? Do you want me to paint like this? Would that be easier? Sure. I can try it. Yeah. Why not? I'm gonna paint sideways, you guys. I'll get up all inside those flowers. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't want to be all up inside flowers? That's what right. I want to know. One, it smells fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'm going to do another little branch coming off the side here. <laughs> did you switch the close up cam? Yes, I did. Okay, it just it's hasn't just, caught up yet. There we go. Would it be helpful if I actually angled it up, do you think? I'm gonna see what that looks like. Well, now I'm looking at the tailgate. I love that color. There we go. Isn't that a great color? Okay, let me see if that helps if I lift it up. Hold on, it hasn't caught up yet. I can show you. Can you? Oh yeah, that's great. Okay, I'm just gonna paint this way. <laughs> okay, let's do this, you guys. Okay, so I got my flowers. I'm adding water, and I'm so sorry, Devin, that you're not going to be able to see this. Well, I'm just <laughs> She's like, wait, nice wait, I can't you. see what you're doing. Okay. Oh, Nicole, you're so great. Okay. Now we're going to put in some yellow flowers. Nicole didn't realize what she was signing herself up for. Now she's quit. So she'll do it. She's she's finding something to, to uh, rest it on. So I'm going to put in some, like, yellow flowers here next to it. And these ones I'm going to do more, like actual flower brush strokes but they're also remember they run into each other so you're not going to have them perfectly like separated from each other Those there we go labels have been more useful than half the things <laughs> that's true so we're putting in some yellow around here just like that and again, you might be like, what kind of flower is that? And it's like, whatever kind of yellow flower you want, you know? You don't have to stress about those types of things. Okay, now I'm gonna do a little bit of lavender off the side. Hey, Sarah. Yeah. Do you wanna move your microphone away from, because the way you're painting, your, your arm is just eating the mic. Oh, what if I put it on this hey, side? Work. Okay. You know they wanna see your face. Tough. Tough. <laughs> you guys will never see Keenan. Just kidding. He's shown his face before. color commentary. <laughs> so I'm going to do some lavender here on the edge. Okay, and then you can do some greenery stems here. Remember, thin line is a vertical hold, light pressure. That's looking very nice, beautiful. I'm gonna do some leaves. <laughs> here, I'll, here. I'm trying to over here. <laughs> I'm like, you'll be fine, figure it out. No, I'm just kidding. Here, here, that might be helpful too. <laughs> Flowers, do them all. <laughs> Leaves, do them in the right order. <laughs> I'm sorry. There we go. <sighs> Diana asked if I can stand on my head too. <laughs> no, I can't do that. 
Although I really, I feel like in my youth, I was able to do a good headstand, handstand. Good headstand or headstand? Wait, what's the difference? Wait, I said, I said head. both. I said, I said headstand twice. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't headstand, headstand. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no accountability. <laughs> Except I asked you what the difference was. <laughs> I answered with the wrong thing. So. <laughs> Okay, so next to these purple flowers, I'm going to do some, like, red roses. So I'm going to grab some red. And if you want these to be more peachy, you can add in a little bit of yellow and add some water. That will make them kind of peachy. So I'm going to do my circular lines. So remember, these first few in the front are going to be detailed, right? So I'm really doing the line work here like that. And then I'm going to use a little bit of water to kind of like blend out. And then the ones like on top that keep going back, you're only seeing the tops of them. So it's really just like hints of pink and they're going to get lighter in value. Like so. Can you calm down? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's throwing brushes here. She's throwing fits. She's so mad she can't see it. <laughs> You're doing really great. Your flowers are looking awesome. <laughs> okay. So, um, just keep on, keep on going with your flowers. Maybe I'll do some like hollyhock looking. I love hollyhocks so much. My mom grows them in her backyard and they're beautiful. So they're kind of, they're like hollyhocks are just flowers on like a really thick stem and they go all the way up and then they get smaller as they go up. So you can do something like that. Where I like to put in like the florals first and then you'll put in the stem after it dries. And I'll do a little more of those over here. Keenan, this is such a great close-up view. I know. I told you. <laughs> but now we're going to have to do this every, every time. Every time? Now I'm like, I'm going to have to learn how to paint from the angle blindfolded. with my blindfold, <laughs> with my paper up. I'll do it for you guys. Jeez, I mean, Nicole's learning how to let her left-handed yeah. for her left-handed peeps. That's commitment right there. Nicole, can I just tell you how much I like you? Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and just, uh, if you want, you can do some greenery in here too. It doesn't have to be just flowers. So maybe I'll do some like grass looking plants in here, you know? And then do if you I, accept your oh sorry yeah do you accept your pencil lines as part of the painting right I do accept my pencil lines as part of the painting when I first was doing watercolor the pencil lines really stressed me out and I would freak out about them because I thought they looked really bad but honestly it it really like and what I realized is I would show people and nobody would be like you have pencil lines like not one person has said that to me so then I realized over time that like pencil lines are just part of it. And um, what you can do if they really bother you is you can, um, one, you can try and digitally take them out and clean them up, but you have to kind of know like Photoshop really well to do that. Or you can try and sketch things out with a watercolor pencil because when you use watercolor pencils, the, the line um, blends out when water hits it. So I've done that when I've done like loose floral paintings and I just kind of want to put composition together. Um, but like things like this, the pencil lines, I just leave 
and it's not a huge deal. Even a lot of the times actually in the reference photos, if you look closely, you can see my pencil marks. So it, I don't try and hide them. Oh, I love those. They are. They're, I call them hollyhocks. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's just my life when I paint florals. They're like, what type of flower is that? I'm like, I don't know. It's got to exist somewhere, right? Yes. You know, it's, it's a thing someplace. Okay, I'm going to do more roses. And sometimes you can even do flowers like a swirl. Like... There's nothing wrong with that. That was just made a swirl. Actually, I probably should have just showed you how to do that in the warm up. <laughs> but you know, a swirl, just make a swirl. All good. Different from a swirly. Different from a swirl, yes. It's a swirly. That's when somebody puts your head in a toilet and flushes the toilet. Oh, God. That's a swirly. <laughs> <laughs> the youngest, the youngest <laughs> growing up. Thankfully, I never experienced that. Keenan, I'm really sorry yeah, that I'm happened to now. you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm using my uh, round two for this part here. I'm using my smaller brush for these more delicate florals. And then I'm going to introduce some yellow back into the painting on this side. Maybe I'll put a sunflower in. Why not? We did it in the warm-ups. The black-eyed daisies. Black-eyed something. Ooh, black-eyed Susans. Black-eyed Susans. I love those. Yeah, those are, that would look great in there. Okay, I'm going to do it. Keenan? Yeah. You took my idea. You made it better, and I well, appreciate you. I'm the idea guy, okay? You are. I take them. And I make them better. <laughs> so for the Black Eyed Susans, they just have a really dark, like, protruding center. And then the petals um, kind of are just oh, going to yeah, come off from, from them. Yeah. Like that. You don't have to do these. Again, this is your painting. You can do... There we go. Oh, those are cute. Yeah, that looks awesome. And then um, I did some kind of like leaves and stems coming out. You can have some, some leaves kind of coming out from this side as well. Let's do some more like tall florals. And I like to have different variations in height too. So you'll see that like the majority of my flowers are right here at the base. However, I do have some like the lavender and like what I'm calling hollyhock kind of sticking out because then that's gonna change my composition on my flower bed. I don't want it like perfectly round, even though that's probably more true to what you would see in nature. This is where you can take um, like as an artist, you can decide to make those choices and add like a different kind of composition just for visual interest. So like I can make these flowers stick out as if they're kind of coming out of nowhere and that's okay. <laughs> Cause it's a painting and this is where it's fun, right? Also the truck bed door is in the way. What? The truck bed door is in the way. Yeah. So that's where the, why they can come out of the <laughs> <laughs> That's true. They can't see what's going on underneath there. Behind the truck. You can do it. It could be anything. <laughs> it's like a little kid holding up these flowers. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to put this back down. So maybe you should go back to an overhead, Keenan. Yes, ma'am. Oh, these are beautiful. Yes. Good job. Yes. 
Oh, I love these rose textures that you've got right here. Those are really nice. Good job. Good job, you guys. Okay, now one thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna do like just, I want it to seem like there's flowers behind my greenery that I put right here so it makes it feel more full. So a really easy trick to do that is you just take a really light color and uh, by light color, grab some color, put some water in it to make it light. And you're just gonna do like a roundish kind of blob in the back. And that gives the hint that there are flowers back there doing something. So it kind of like, if you make it too dark, then it's gonna actually pull to the front um, or bring your eye to it. And sometimes we don't want that. We just wanna fill in the space without like being like in your face about it. So that's where doing like super soft washes to fill in some of the white space comes in handy. And maybe I'll even have some go above my truck line here. But you just gotta make sure they're smaller. Susan wants us to zoom to the left flowers once more. Okay, I'll hold it up one more time, Susan. Kenan? Close up cam. Let's do this. Oh, I lost it. Oh dear. You okay? Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I will be once I'm done with this. <laughs> <laughs> we got it? Got it. Okay. Did she need something specific? I think, I think she just wanted to see the left side of the flowers. Oh. There we go. Oh. Somebody said cattails would be nice for the back. Michelle, I wish I could picture what cattails are. They look like big corn dogs on a stick. Yeah. <laughs> they look <Yeah>. like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I know exactly what you're talking about. Those would be nice. <laughs> they look Great like, they look like big corn dogs on a stick. <laughs> I mean, I guess corn dogs are on a stick generally, but it's, it's I knew, corn dogs. Yeah, with a long stick. Maybe yes. that's what you yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah, Stuck in the ground. Yeah. Or even like those wheat tears. Is that a... All right, I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> Only reason I had a blank ex uh, expression on my face is because I didn't know what you were talking about. And I tried to search, but didn't <laughs> I, I recognized that you didn't know what I was talking about, so I moved By my on. Blank <laughs> <face>. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put this back down now. Okay. Yes, great colors. I love the variation in color. That's something else that I try to focus on where I didn't want it all one color. However, if you want to make all of the flowers in the back of your truck purple or pink or whatever, do it. This is your painting. You can make it however way you want. You do not have to follow me exactly. Okay, that was step three. We're on to step four, and I know we've been doing this for a while, but we are in the home stretch, you guys. We're Excuse me, we're almost done with this. So I'm going to do the license plate and then I'm gonna do the shadows on my truck. So the license plate, you can customize to say whatever you want. I did I Heart Mom, cause Mother's Day is coming up, you know. And um, all I did for that, I just kind of free handed it, but if you wanna outline it with a pencil first, maybe I'll do that. If you just wanna take a pencil and like softly place where your letters are gonna be, that's probably a really good idea. And some people um, have been so creative with their license plates and really making it look like a real license plate by using numbers and they even did like the right fonts and it's amazing. But again, when you're doing the letters to get a thin line, Vertical hold, light pressure. Now, what I've learned from Nicole from the lettering 
is I know that I teach you guys not to plant your hand when you're doing long thin lines in painting and drawing. However, when you're doing letters, you actually do want to plant your hand. Make sure it's dry underneath. But plant your hand and then that gives you a little bit more control. And if your letters aren't perfect, it's okay. Okay, and I'm gonna do a red heart. Oh, your letters are so nice. Thanks. Good job. Devin, this is where you did it, the red on your hand, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about it. <laughs> so this is how la like late in her picture it was. Right here. Messed it. Jinxie. She's like, let's not talk about it. And sometimes with like license plates, they do like little little like numbers on the top or the bottom. I could have made that up, but I feel like that's true where there's like, I don't know, something going on up here, maybe something going on there. I don't know if that's right, but some people got really detailed with their license plate and I loved it. Okay, now I'm going to do the shadow on my truck. So I'm gonna to switch to my round six because I'm gonna do a bigger area. And then you can do this two ways. You can either pull color from your tire to make your shadows, or you can put a soft wash on your brush. Um, I'm, I just like pulling color because it's just easier for me. However, if you pull color, you do have to go back in when it dries and put the color back in, which is what I think I did during the recorded tutorial. So I think for this, I'll actually just put a soft gray wash on my brush and then put in my shadow. So, Right here at the bottom of the wheels, I'm gonna start by putting in horizontal lines. That's gonna go across. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of water and have it transition out. And then it also, that shadow, they sh the car itself is casting a shadow on the ground too. So make sure you put that shadow that goes all the way up to the bumper. Now the other thing you wanna be aware of is you wanna make sure that the shadow is a different value from your bumper or else they'll run into each other. So you can either mix up the colors of the gray, like my gray here on my shadow is slightly more red and that works to my advantage because it differentiates between the shadow on my um, bumper. Or you can just make those values different so then there's a you can tell the difference between what's going on. Now, around your tires, you're gonna wanna make sure that there is a stronger shadow around your tires because those ones are actually touching the ground. That's what's touching the ground, so that's where our shadow is gonna be darkest. And you, you don't just go on the bottom part of the wheel. The shadow actually continues along the other side of the wheel as well. like so. And then you can have it kind of just like taper off along the outside here. Beautiful. Uh, I don't think so. I think that's nice. You guys can decide if it's too light or too dark. Yeah, I think they're really nice. The biggest thing is just to make sure that the shadow is strongest right underneath the wheels. That's the biggest thing. and then it keeps on going underneath the truck and then also down. And you're gonna get some different blooms on this texture on the ground and remember we love those. We embrace those and we appreciate them. And now this is the very last step which is you take a second, you step back from your painting and you say, okay, is there anything that I need to fix or adjust or you know, like bring a little bit of attention to. So one thing that I am going to do is you can see the top of my truck pretty well. I didn't cover it that much with my flowers. So I'm actually going to go in 
and do another layer of color on the very top of my truck here. And if you see some of your window through your flowers, you can actually take your number two and grab some black and put like in between the flowers, put in your window line. If you see it very well. If you don't see it very well and the flowers are covering it, nothing wrong with that, then don't worry about putting it in. Some of mine you can see pretty well though, so I'm gonna go in and outline it in black. Um, Amy said that my shadow looked a little bit purple, which it does. It does have a purple hue to it, and I think that's because my water, actually, is what gave it that color. That's why it's that purpley color, which I find a, as a happy accident. Yeah. That's why watercolor is amazing. Probably ran over a lavender flower. <laughs> Probably, and then it, like, <laughs> got on the road. <laughs> okay, let's hold it up and show people. You guys ready? Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> the answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> and remember that when we share our artwork with other people, it's, I know it's an insecure thing, but a lot of it is just seeing how people approach the same exact project and how they do it differently. You, we learn from each other. It does not matter the stage. We can all learn from each other. So, Make sure you hold it close to your face. So we'll start with Alex. Hold it up towards the camera. <laughs> All right, we're switching. There we go. You're ready, Alex. You're first. Oh, gosh, man. Yeah, there it is. Nice. There's you, can po you can pose nicely next yeah, to it. Sometimes I like to do some glamour shots. I do a little... Glamour shot. Beautiful. Okay. And there, then. Do it Vanna White style. Come on. There. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, these turned out beautiful. You guys did so amazing. Um, thank you so much for painting this with me. And thank you guys so much for understanding on that color for the truck. You guys are really great and I just love you so much. Uh, if you painted this, share it. I know it's so scary, but honestly, the best part is being able to see how other people painted the project, how they mix their colors, how they did their shapes. That's how we learn and that's how we get better. So even though it's scary putting yourself out there, people learn from what you post. So put it on Facebook. We have a wonderful Facebook group called Let's Make Art Watercolor. It's like almost 20,000 members. It's yes. huge. Um, and it's a very um, inspiring place. It's just for sharing your work. So that's all it is for. We do have a separate business page where if you need to contact us about questions, that's where you can contact us regarding orders. But the, our, our page is just for sharing art. If you're on Instagram, tag us in it. Let's go make art, or you can hashtag let's make art so we can see it. And um, I think that's all I gotta say. Next week, we're doing the mama bear. Hello. So that tutorial is releasing tomorrow. Um, I wanna thank you guys so much for painting. You guys did awesome. Keenan and Nicole, wonderful as always. Thank you, thank you. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.